Welcome back to Ahead of the Curve, the Scoliosis Experience podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Megan Teed, and we are back with another special episode, an interview style type of episode with Shivani Persad, and super excited to have you here, Shivani. Um, Shivani lives in Toronto, and I actually um, found her on Instagram probably like two years ago. Um, I was listening to an interview with you on, I think, some sort of scoliosis advocacy topic. So welcome. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. So excited to be here. So um, can you just give our listeners a little bit of a background about like where you live, kind of what you do um, as we get started here? Sure. Yeah. So I was born in Trinidad in the Caribbean. I lived there until I was about five and then uh, our family moved to Canada. Um, I went to school here, everything like elementary school, middle school, high school, all the same people never moved houses. Um, and then I went to McMaster University, which is in Hamilton, which is about 40 minutes west of Toronto. Um, I have an honors degree in poli sci and a bachelor's degree in French, which is a very common degree. Uh, it's a very common degree sort of combo to do um, in Canada. Um, but then I got the opportunity to um, model full time. So I started modeling um, in Europe full time. Before that, I was kind of doing it here and there in, in Canada. But uh, my agency got this great opportunity. So I was like, you know, I applied to this one master's program, kind of put all my eggs in one basket and I, I didn't get in. And then at the same time, this opportunity came up. So I thought, you know, this but I have nothing to lose now. This is the best time to do it. Mm -hmm. So I did. And then I actually ended up modeling full time for 10 years uh, between Europe, America and Asia, which was, you know, the best experience. Um, obviously not something a lot of people get to do very, very, very hard on my back uh, because of constant standing, being in heels, always being on a plane. Um, so that was definitely uh, one of the reasons why I started talking so much about my scoliosis as well was because I think that that's something that people wouldn't necessarily think of linking together. Mm -hmm. um, and then during the pandemic, I went back to school, I went to journalism school, and I started doing journalism, um, all levels, written audio, video. Uh, and I really wanted to be a journalist um, when I moved back home. But here, it's just not very digital forward the way it is in America. And uh, I just found that the salaries were just way too low to be like livable. So I decided to switch from journalism to content marketing. So I work in tech now and I'm a content marketing manager and um, I really like it. I get to do all my journalism stuff, plus kind of all my, you know, like nerdy video editing, writing <laughs> stuff. And it's, it's kind of a great mix and tech is a great industry to be in. It's growing and always changing. And that does also mean that I'm sitting all the time again. So that's also not great. Um, but, you know, I've just learned to sort of work in um, stretching and things like that. Also doesn't hurt that my husband is a sports doctor. So <laughs> he helps me a lot. But uh, yeah, that's, I, I guess, like the cliff notes on my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So um, obviously you have scoliosis. I didn't mention that in the intro, but um, can you tell us a little bit about your um, scoli story? Like when did you first get diagnosed? Like how were you diagnosed? Give us a little bit of a uh, taste on that. Yeah, sure. So I noticed it myself when I was about 12 and I thought it was because I always laid on one side of my body when I was sleeping and stuff. So I was like, oh no, I'm doing this to myself. Let me start laying on the other side. And then I was a dancer and my mom sort of noticed it. And she was like, this is not normal. Like, she was like, why is your one shoulder always higher? How come this one hip is like sticking out? And I was like, mom, it's fine. Like you're making a big deal out of nothing, whatever. And then, um, I was also at the, at the temple one day and one of my aunts was like tying a sari on me and she was like, stand up straight. And I was like, I am standing up straight. And she was like, well, your hip is like all the way over there. <laughs> like what's going on. <laughs> and so then I was like, okay, you know, I need to go to the doctor. So we went to my family doctor and he did the regular, you know, bend over test. And he was like, yeah, like you have a rib pump, like we need to go get an x-ray. So I did. And, um, my, so my top, I have an S curve. The top one is 25 degrees and the bottom one is 47 degrees. So it's borderline like severe scoliosis. Although when you look at me, you can't really see it. I, I sort of compensate a lot. Um, but really where you can see it for me is like, my shoulders are super, one is definitely higher than the other. One of my hips is totally higher than the other. 
Um, my rib, the rib hump on my left side is quite significant. Um, and then I also just experience a lot of pain. Like I have friends that have scoliosis and have literally no pain. It's really like not a one size fits all type of condition. Um, but for me, it's been really like thoracolumbar, a lot of pain, like basically for like 20 years. Like I got it when I found out when I was like 12, 13, I'm going to be 33 this year. Um, so chronic, chronic sort of like dull, achy pain. And then sometimes I'll have those like bouts of extremely sharp, like sort of what the hell do I do kind of pain. Mm -hmm. Um, and I found for me, what works the best you know, when I found it, I was 13. So they were like, you know, there's no point in you getting a brace. It's probably not going to get worse. Braces are, you know, preventative. And, uh, they also saw like, since I was very active and like, I was a cheerleader and I was a dancer, they were like, it's obviously not preventing you from doing much. And so they were like, this is a really intense surgery. Like if you don't need to get it, you shouldn't get it. So and I was like, okay. So I ended up doing it. I did a lot of Cairo, um, a lot of physio, a lot of recently I've been doing a lot of, um, acu massage. Um, and I found that really like the treatment helps number one, and then just like working out, like if I don't work out, it hurts so much. Obviously as someone with scoliosis, you have to be really careful when you're working out. Cause you can really hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but I've always just tried, yeah, my best to stay active. And the more I move, the better I feel, I find. But it's a, it's a journey every day still. Like I still have chronic pain, so I'm still working through it. And uh, I definitely wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy because it doesn't go away really, you know? So it's been, uh, it's been quite the journey for me with scoliosis. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after you were diagnosed, the, were you still like those same cob angles when you were diagnosed. So the thoracic and the lumbar, is that what they were? And now they've kind of stayed pretty consistent over time or have they progressed? I think they're worse. Um, I haven't gotten another x-ray. Um, they say like, I think they said like when I was 16, they were like, you, you really only need it like once every five years or something like that. And I was like, Oh, okay. Um, and then, um, recently I had a really bad, I don't know if you saw it on my Instagram, really bad situation. Yeah. I, I honestly don't even know what sparked that, but that was the worst scoliosis pain I've ever had. And, um, I did go get the referral to get the next x-ray, but then I didn't end up going because I did so much like osseo and chiro and acupuncture that the pain literally went away. And that was like, I swear to God, that was the first time in 20 years that I have been painless. Like Wow. literally no pain at all. I was like, this is like what everybody <laughs> experiences every day. Like you guys are so lucky. Like I was like, this is crazy. So then I just thought maybe I don't need it. So, um, I didn't go get it, which I probably should have just for reference anyways. And maybe I'll still go get it. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it's worse though. Like I can, I can see it. Like it's I know. Yeah. Right? yeah. At least two degrees at least. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, you know, intuitively like what your body is doing and mm -hmm. what it was before and what it is now, how your clothes fit. So, um, yeah, totally. What are, what are some treatments that you've tried over the years? You said you've tried everything. Like I kind of like to hear like what you've tried, what has been good for you, what has like not worked for you very well. Yeah. So when I was nine, I was in um, a really bad car accident. And from that accident, we got, I guess, like a lot of coverage for uh, Cairo and physio. So I did a lot of Cairo back then. And um, but the chiropractor I had was very exercise based. So he didn't really crack me or anything like that, but it was just like a lot of exercise. And I found that that helped me a lot. He taught me a lot of breathing techniques about how to get into certain stretches and really like add air to this part. He would have me like, hang off of different things to like stretch it out and things like that, which I found really helped. So I sort of gravitated towards like exercise-based therapy really early. Um, acupuncture also helped me a lot. The Chinese acupuncture was a little difficult for me because I have really bad anxiety. And although I did find it extremely effective, it was very effective for me, but in the actual treatment, I just felt like my blood pressure was so high because I was like, oh, there's so many needles in me and like, it hurts so much. And so I find it very effective and I still do it. However, I also find Japanese acupuncture really effective and Japanese acupuncture is so cool because like, you don't even feel the needles in you at all. And they do a lot of things with like burning certain herbs. And like, like I had this sort of like inflammation issue with my right hip, which I, I believe it 
came from the scoliosis. Like, I think it's all related because I just can't see how it can't be <laughs> related. Mm -hmm. um, and the Japanese acupuncture was like the only thing that took that away. And that was like six months of nonstop, like chronic, you know, inflammation type, yeah. like dull ache pain there. Um, and the Japanese acupuncture really took that away. Another thing I did was like Eldoa stretches. Um, someone I had, a, I did, I used to do rolfing massage, which helped me a lot. My mom found that like somebody told her about it and I did it and it was extremely painful, but again, extremely like effective. Like at one point, I think my, my back was like the straightest it's ever been after seeing her wow. for so long. Mm -hmm. And then she was the one that recommended these like Eldoa stretches, which I had never heard of before but there was this Pilates place in Toronto that actually did it. And so I did those and through doing those as well, again, it was, it's hardcore stretching, but my, my spine did get like a little bit straighter. But the thing with that is too, it's just like maintenance, like all the, all the, all the time. And I was like, this is so not sustainable or realistic for me. Like, I can't, I can't do this. I tried to do it on my own. They drew me all the sketches and everything. And I was just like, I'm not forcing myself to do this. Like I, I'm the kind of person like straight up, I need like a trainer. I need a, a therapist. Like I'm not like, I don't have that in me to do it like that effectively by myself. Um, so those were two super effective therapies for me. And then I would say, yeah, anything movement-based exercise-based and also ACU, those were the best. And then in this last like horrible back injury that I had, um, I, it was a mixture of Cairo, Osseo and Accu. Those three together were really what healed me within like that month of me basically like barely being able to walk some days from it. Um, but yeah, I think like, a mix. I think, I, you know, every, my husband's a sports doctor and he always says like, everybody's body is so different. You don't know what therapies are going to work for who. So mm -hmm. I just kind of do a mix of everything now, plus like constant exercise. And that's the only thing I can do to sort of you know, maintain it on a daily basis. I do think foam rolling is also really helpful for me. And then some of the stretches that you show that you can like do on the wall and things like that, those kind of things I find really effective as well. So for people in the U S um, they're not as familiar with osteo. Can you kind of explain the difference between Cairo and osteo? Or I don't know if I'm the best person to do it, but I <laughs> osteo, I would, I say it's like super low impact. Like, I feel like it's very, one of the osteo that I use here in Canada is one of my best friends and she, they just sort of like look at your like balance. And then I go on the table. She sort of like moves my legs around a little bit, does a little like light stretching. She puts her arm, her hands in certain places. And it's just extremely light, what like low impact where I would say Cairo is obviously there's a huge spectrum of how different chiropractors treat. Um, my husband is also an exercise based, it's like sports rehab Cairo. Um, I think at certain times cracking works for some people. And for me, sometimes I have the stiffest situation where I'm like, I need to be cracked like right now. Like I know it, but I don't love it. Um, so for me, yeah, Cairo, I think is like either if there's those Cairo's that are like straight Cairo's that like crack, crack, crack. And then there's other people that work more exercise into it. I personally really like the manual therapy part of it. So when they use like a, the Theragun type of stuff on me or like those different things where like those metal sort of treatment things where they really get into your knots and take them out. I get like sadistic with it. Like I'm like, stick your elbow in or like, I need that knot out. Like, so that's kind of like, I guess if that's kind of explaining like the difference maybe, but I would say osteo is like the, probably like the least impact sort of treatment I've ever gotten. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Cause I, I think a lot of people there at least here they're recommended, okay, you go to, well, you either don't do anything at all. They're just like, yeah, there's nothing we can do to help you. Or they recommend um, yoga, they recommend Cairo or PT. Um, so osteo isn't really like as much of a thing, um, at least around where, at least around where I live. <laughs> so, where do you live? I'm in South Carolina. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I think yoga too. It's like, it's good, but like, honestly, I've also hurt myself in yoga. And so I just feel like, you know, <laughs> you gotta be really careful just like recommending these things to people. Yeah. You know? Like, I, I feel like it's when they, cause they said the same thing to me. Like I, they left me feeling like really quite hopeless. Like I was very afraid at the end. Like I really didn't want to do the surgery, but I also wasn't expecting them to say, well, yeah, you know, and they were like, well, do you want to have a baby? I was like, I don't know. I'm 16. Like what? <laughs> and they were like, well, it's probably going to be really painful. I was like, 
Awesome. Thank you. That was, that's so helpful. <laughs> like what are the solutions? <laughs> like they really, they really didn't give me any. And my mom, it was really my mom. She was like my champion. Like she was like, I do not want my daughter to be in pain. Like I yeah. need to figure this out. And so she was the one that went and researched like all this stuff at that time and found all these different things for me, to, for me to try, you know? So, but I wish there was more people like you around here because I feel like I don't really meet people that are like actually scoliosis experts, like, or like really focus on like understanding what, what we mean when we say I'm in pain in certain areas or not even the pain, but the discomfort it's what I don't think people really understand what I, when I say like, no, do you understand? Like, I always feel like the left side of my body is like this, like, yeah. you know, like people don't even certain physios or like, I don't feel like they really understand. Like, so to have someone that's an expert, like I've never met an expert here. Like I wish you lived here. <laughs> my life would be a lot easier. <laughs> um, so kind of speaking on that, that same topic, I was talking to my friend yesterday. She has Lyme disease and she was talking about this term called medical gaslighting. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what happens all the time with scoliosis. Like you yep. are always kind of gaslit. Like yeah. your, your scoliosis isn't causing your pain. There's no way. Or your scoliosis isn't causing your breathing condition or your difficulty. Yeah. Like, how can you look at an x-ray <laughs> someone's curved spine and then say, oh, nothing beneath it is being affected. It's like, I literally like can't breathe. I feel like on my left side a lot. And like, I, so I feel like cardio is so hard for me and endurance and running. And even though like, I'm fairly athletic, like I work out like six days a week. Um, but I noticed that that kind of stuff is so hard for me. And it's always been like, I, and I'm like, like one time when I came out of my Rolfing therapy, she was working really hard on my back and I felt like something was like released. And I was like, is this what everybody else breathes like? Like, this is a lot of air. Like, I don't get that. Like, I was like, what, this is crazy. Like, so it's definitely like, yeah, it's so much gaslighting. Like, and I, I think people don't understand because there's a lot of people with scoliosis that don't have pain. And like, even super, um, like super severe scoliosis. Some people, I used to do this yoga thing in New York that was like um, specifically for scoliosis. It was actually really effective as well. The place was called like, the Mada yoga or something like that. Um, but they did scoliosis specific yoga. It was basically me and a bunch of like 70 year olds in the class, like hanging from the ceiling and stuff, but it was nice. the only scoliosis specific thing I've ever found. And, um, I, there was a few people there with very severe scoliosis. Like, you know, you could tell shorter stature, you know, very much like protruding, you know, rib pump and things like that. And they were like saying that they don't get a ridiculous amount of pain with it. So yeah. it's like, it's such a weird condition, right? Where like some people are painless. And so it makes them think that like, you can't be in that much pain. You look so normal. Like, you know? Right. right. Yeah. Um, so with cool. your, with your modeling, has your scoliosis kind of impacted that at all? Cause I know that, you know, just for me, like my clothes fit a little bit differently because mm -hmm. of scoliosis and you know I, I danced ballet and I remember my instructors like always like going and trying to correct me so I can only imagine when you're kind of under the microscope with modeling like yeah what, what was your experience like with that so I always had to compensate a lot like I had to remind myself okay you gotta you have to lift this shoulder just remember to like stick try to stick your hip in a little bit um especially for jobs that were like e-commerce that was like very straight some e-commerce was like they didn't like you to move so that was always way harder for me because I'd be like, okay, mm -hmm. side, and I'd be like, my one side's not going to look like my other side, but okay. Um, and then especially with styling, right? Like to your point, like the way things would twist on me and things like that. And they'd be like, oh, I don't think this shirt was sewn very well. And I'll be like, no, no, I think it's me. <laughs> like you definitely just need to like pin one side and not the other side. Like I can guarantee you, or same thing with pants, like, you know, the way like the hem would shift, or maybe one of the legs would be a little bit longer or whatever. And Sometimes, yeah, the clothes definitely weren't made well, but other times I could, I was like, no, it's, it's definitely me guys. <laughs> like I'm, I can guarantee you. Um, so it was definitely difficult, especially like for like lingerie things a lot of the times and I, uh, and like swimsuit stuff, that's when I would get like super self-conscious because I was like, it is so obvious that one side of my, one side of my, my, my side is like this. And the other side is like that, like, it's very obvious. So like I used to shoot a lot of um, Airy for American Eagle and the first campaign I shot for them, I remember being really nervous because they don't retouch at all. 
Oh, and wow. so obviously the whole point of that was because, you know, we don't want to, you know, project these mm-hmm. such images to young women and people. And I understand that. Um, and that's why I was excited to be a part of it. But the scoliosis person in me was also scared because I was like, it's not even the weight part. Like I was scared for sure of that, but mm-hmm. I was more scared of it being like, like my body just looking weird because I have this like very significant curve on one side and nothing on the other side. Right. So yeah, it was something that I have had to just like get over mm-hmm. eventually. I also realized too, that a lot of times, like I would see it in pictures, but other people wouldn't see it. So I was like, uh, maybe I'm just like overreacting with this or I'm overly judging myself. But as you said, you really are under a microscope. It's like, these are the people that say like, you know, they're going to like measure your thigh, like right. <laughs> for how, for how fat your thighs are, like th- stuff like that. But, so it's, it's hard to not be scrutinizing yourself like that all the time. Right. Um, so it, it totally affected me. I mean, it, it definitely still does, but I'm more of like a curve model now. I'm like a size, six, which is ridiculous, but because I'm a size six, eight. Um, oh my God. but I feel like, yeah, our industry is really wild, but, um, but I feel like now they're so much more accepting of different types of bodies. And so as now that I'm someone that has obvious scoliosis, it's kind of like, I just kind of embrace it. And I'm like, yeah, this is how my body is. And I'm yeah. still super strong. And if it looks that way, it's fine. Like that's actually, I'm actually proud of like the fact that I deal with all this pain all the time. And I'm, I still um, try to be happy and positive and ambitious and like modeling should also be about that. It shouldn't always be just about solely like how you look, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I work with a lot of adolescents who are having to wear brace, like a scolio brace. And, um, you know, they're always trying to hide that. And they're also, also always trying to hide, you know, their unevenness of their shoulders and yeah their back like do you have any like helpful like words of wisdom or you know tips for them to kind of get through this little you know it's not little (laughs) to them um, through these years where they're really struggling with confidence yeah I think it's really hard because you know people really are mean and like the society that we live in it's not conducive to people being different Mm -hmm. um But what I can say is like, for me, like, I really see it as like my superpower now. Like, I'm like, I'm really, I'm really resilient and I'm really strong. And I deal with something every day that like a lot of people don't have to deal with. And so if I could give any advice, it's like, just know that in and of itself makes you really powerful. And like, I can't imagine, I never had to wear the brace. I did have friends that did. And I I can't imagine, like, of course, I know there's so many factors that come with that too. In, in, with respect to it being, you know, something that somebody can make fun of you about. Um, but I feel like if you just try to view it as like, this is a short time in your life where you're, this thing is literally like supporting you and it's only to help you, you know, get further. And if you just view it, my therapist is always trying, having to remind me that like, I see things so black and white and it's not things aren't like that. Some things are temporary, right? Mm-hmm. So if you can just view it as like, this is a temporary thing. And, um, and if you can must muster the confidence at some point to even be proud of it and be okay with it, then, you know, that will definitely help. But I can't push that on anybody because I didn't have to wear a brace, but in terms of like the rest of it, I just think, you know, I really see it as like, it's what makes me different. And, I don't know my life really even without, I don't even remember not having it. Right. So to me, it's just like a part of me and I, something that I have to live and work with. And I'm so, I'm extra proud of myself when I do stuff now, you know, like I'm extra proud of myself when I deadlift like certain amount of weight, or if I am able to, you know, model for 12 hours straight or sit at my desk and work really hard. Like sometimes you got to remind yourself, like we're dealing with something that like most people don't have to deal with. It's so much extra quite frankly, pain. It's just pain. Like it's much extra pain. And so we should be doing everything we can to make ourselves feel the best that we can, but also like give yourself grace and just be proud of yourself that like, you know, you're handling it. Like uh, it it sucks. (laughs) Like it really does. Like I wouldn't, I really wouldn't wish it on anybody, but everyone has their things. Right. So if this is our thing, then this is our thing. And we can just be a community. I used to be a part of this community on Facebook called all the cool kids have scoliosis. Oh, and I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it was, this was like, I don't know, 15 years ago or something, but I was like, just seeing everybody's stories on there and everybody used to share their, their, their 
x-rays and we would all talk about it. And that really made me feel like not alone. So just definitely know that you're not alone as well, you know? And mm -hmm. I think that your, your flaws can totally be your superpowers. You just got to change your mindset around it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's so true. What, what is like the most rewarding aspect or like, can you think of an experience that you wouldn't have had um, if it weren't for your scoliosis? Hmm. That's really interesting. That's a hard, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know every day. Um, <laughs> I'm like pain. Um, I just think, I don't know if there's one experience, but just the feeling of like, honestly getting through it all that, like so many times I've had like debilitating back pain, like so much. And I actually lived with a friend of mine in university who also had scoliosis and she had really bad back pain too. And she recently had uh, she, two babies and she said they were very difficult pregnancies for her. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like, because of the scoliosis pain. And I just remember like, you know, her coming home some days from like walking from campus to our student house and just being in so much pain. And like, I remember being like Lois, like, I get it. Yeah. I, I get it. You know, like, I don't think anyone else will understand you the way that I understand you because it's really painful. And it's, it's the, it's the mix of like this constant discomfort with that chronic pain that's sometimes dull and sometimes really sharp. But every time I get through it, I remind, it's like a reminder of like, you can get through anything. Like every time I go through it, it's like, it, this sucks so much, but like you did it, you did yeah. it again, girl, like, there you go. And now you got to do the rest of your life too. Like, so I just feel like I maybe wouldn't have those instances of like that constant sort of like confidence boost or like that, just like getting through it all the time that it, I think it really helps build those, build your confidence over time. And just like build that resilience in yourself. I don't know if I would have found, I mean, I, I don't know, women, we deal with a lot all the time um, that forces us to have that resilience, but this was really different because it was, re it's really specific to me uh, and my pain. And I don't know if I would have, I don't know if I would have gained that sort of resilience from honestly, from anywhere else, because it's so personal, right? Like everybody's curve is so different. Everybody's pain is so different. Like, so I've, I've just de dealt with it and kind of like making that promise to myself every time. Like, I know this sucks money, but it will get better. And like, you just have to get through it. Like every other time you've gotten through it. I don't think I would have gotten that resilience from anywhere else. Yeah. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've mentioned deadlifting. What, what is your exercise routine that you really enjoy doing? Yeah. So right now I'm doing, um, I'm trying to do like that 75 hard 75 soft like challenge. So um, I'm working out six days a week. So I'm trying to work out, um, with F45, uh, mm -hmm. four days a week and then boxing one day a week. And then something else like light, like just walking or something another day. Um, it, this has been like, I've been doing F45 and boxing now for like almost a year. And I just, between those two, I feel my best. I feel like I'm able to like eat what feels good in my body and work out and feel like I'm getting stronger. Um, I also just like have to sort of turn off like everybody else sometimes and just know, like, if something is uncomfortable for my back, I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't need to worry about them being like, Oh, she, like, are you, is, is she being weak or she can't lift these heavy weights or she can't do the movement or whatever. I have to just be like, I don't care what anybody else thinks because I only, I'm the one that knows my back. And if that hurts me, yeah, I'm not doing it right. Like rowing, for example, like I don't know when I get on the rolling machine, it hurts my lower back so much, no matter how many different ways I try to do it. So I just, now I sort of, if that comes up, sometimes I have a lot of treatment and it's okay to do it, but I can't do it at the same like level as everybody else. So I just ask them for a modifier, like, or a different exercise. I'm like that one, for some reason, my back can't do it. I'm not going to feel weak or useless or whatever. I'm just going to not do it. And then I, I just do something else and it's fine. And so I found that like these kind of exercises that I can kind of mold to be like what I need and, um, you know, boxing I do with, um, I do like personal training with it now, like the one-on-one -on -one sessions. And that's been really helpful, um, because she, like my trainer can kind of help me figure out, you know, um, how to balance better. And like, that's why I really like boxing because it really is like 
kind of playing tennis with your feet and like, and then moving your, you know, your torso. And so it really forces me to try to be as balanced as possible and really understand my body and how it works and how it moves. And I found a lot of help um, and sort of just as an athlete, understanding my body better with my boxing trainer. And so I think that's why I really like those ones. Plus when it comes to workouts, you just have to do what you enjoy, right? What feels good. Like what doesn't make you feel like crap for doing it. Like I like wanted to like yoga so bad. Like I was like, I'm like, my background is like Indo-Caribbean. Like, I'm like, <laughs> like love yoga. Like, but it's just like, sometimes the slow movement. And I was like, I can't get into this. Like I just can't do it. Like, so I just, I was like, I found what it works for me and I like it. And, and then sometimes when I'm in New York, I go to um, like reformers Pilates. Mm -hmm. which I like a lot too, because it's like lengthening and like, yeah, that's really, really cool. But right now, yeah, that's my, that's my little routine. Four days of F45, one of boxing and then one, like just walking. Yeah, that's great. And I love that you brought up the fact that you're not afraid to speak up and modify things because I think so many people, they go into these group classes and they feel like they have to look like everybody else and do the same movements as everybody else. And if that's going to stop you from doing an exercise routine that you really enjoy, like it's not worth it because you're going to end up hurting yourself and then you're not going to move at all. So, yeah. And the other thing I learned that I need to do is just, as soon as I go in, go right to the instructor and just say, Hey, I have fully yeah. this. Um, so feel, please feel free to come around and fix me and mo modify something I'm doing or align, but don't be, don't be surprised if I put up my hand and I'm like, I need help because for example, even like a deadlift, right? Sometimes like I feel really unbalanced when my feet are right, are parallel because my body's not parallel, right? So sometimes I'm like, I do need to put one of my feet a little bit behind. So I actually feel balanced. And a lot of times they'll come up to me and they'll be like, well, your feet aren't in line. And I'm like, well, I have scoliosis. <laughs> so it actually feels better for me when they're not in line. Like, so yeah. it's like, you know, small things like that. If you just let them know, like I find, I don't know the, the studio that I'm at, they're so receptive and they listen. And a lot of them are like Cairo and physio students. So they know a lot about, you know, a lot about the human body. So they help a lot. And I think like, just kind of advocating for yourself from the beginning and just mm -hmm. going up and saying like, if something looks off for me, it's probably because I can't tell for my body that it is. So like, you're going to need to help me. Um, and usually people are super cool about it. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of a, a new question that I'm asking people kind of to wrap things up, what is, um, something that you're finding fun in your life that's ahead of the curve? Like, so, uh, you know, maybe a book that you're reading that you're really enjoying or like some music that you found or Netflix series, like, is there something that you're really into right now that you'd like to share that I'm really into? I'm into a lot of things. <laughs> Um, like one thing that stands out dangerous being that type of Gemini. Um, one thing that's, well, I've been job seeking for a little while. Um, so I'm learning, I was laid off like two months ago, but I'm learning a lot about, you know, interviewing and, mm -hmm. um, sort of like how to change your resume around and write great cover letters and things like that. And, um, as exhausting as it is, I'm learning that that in and of itself is a skill and yeah. like, job seeking is a full-time job. I just got two offers today, actually. So now I have to choose uh, which one I want. <laughs> Congratulations. But, um, yeah, that kind of process is, is, is exciting. It's kind of exciting to go from like, okay, do I get past the first phone screen? And then you have an assignment and then, you know, so it's like this whole process of like getting through it and then getting to the final stage. Um, that's been really consuming my life basically for the last two months. Um, but I'm finding that, um, I'm actually really good at it. And like, I am getting offers and, you know, it's given me more confidence in myself for sure. And so I'm learning a lot of, of skills that way. And, um, I'm also just learning, trying to learn right now to just sort of like how to up level my, my content marketing skills. So I've been taking a few like different courses and things like that. And like feeling like I'm back in school again, is kind of fun. Like I always really liked school and so yeah, I'm in, I'm enjoying that a lot. That's awesome. Learning is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a Ravenclaw, like through and through. Like I'm a learner. I love doing that. I'm like that. Most journalists, like I think, we're are like Ravenclaws, right? Like we're all like about how much can I learn about this? Like that's totally me. So yeah, I've been loving loving that part of it. But it has been very exhausting. Like that is shout, shout out to anyone job seeking. Like it is a full time <laughs> job. It's very exhausting and 
trying on your brain and your psyche and everything. So mm-hmm. sending lots of love to anyone that's in the interview process oh. right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck, like trying to decide which job you want to take and Thanks. <laughs> comes with that. Yeah. How can people find you if they want to kind of follow along with your story and just kind of see what you're up to? Yeah, sure. So my Instagram is Livshiv, L-I-V-E-S-H-I-V. My husband makes fun of me and calls it Live Shiv, if that ever <laughs> helps you to remember it. Um, I'm the same on I'm the same on uh, Twitter, L-I-V-E-S-H-I-V. And then um, TikTok is also the same, but it's just with an extra V. So L-I-V-E-S-H-I-V-V because somebody stole my uh, um, but yeah, it, I'm the most active probably on Instagram, um, probably my favorite social media app. So yeah, mm-hmm. feel free to find me on there. I'm also really active on LinkedIn, but I don't know if that's just because I've been job seeking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been really active on LinkedIn. So feel free to search my first and last name there and you'll find me, but, uh, but yeah, Instagram or Twitter would be great. Um, and I'm always down to talk to anyone about, mm-hmm you know, any, any issues you're having, or like I was, uh, I was telling Megan before we started talking that, um, I have a follower that's been messaging me because her son just got diagnosed with scoliosis and she's really scared and doesn't know what to do. I referred her to your page so she could see like sort of some exercises and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not uh, a common experience. Uh, so happy to like be a sounding board for anybody or like, you know, have a community in any way we can. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and giving people some hope and encouragement because I think it's needed. So thank you so much. No, thanks so much. This was awesome. I'm I'm going to keep doing the exercises and things that you're posting as well. So awesome. Awesome. Well, um, thanks again for tuning into another episode of Ahead of the Curve. I will catch you next time. 